going to kick off with a couple actually about multi-frame generation. Mm. This one, first of all, from John Miser or Misa. Uh, hello, exclamation point. Do you guys think that MFG has an unfairly poor reputation after re-entering the PC sphere after 15 plus exclusive years on console? My impression of frame generation when properly deployed is very positive. In December, I bought a well-priced 4070 Ti Super pre-build, but I wish I had access to 3X and 4X MFG with current path trace games. If I can reach 45 to 60 FPS with DLSS, then 2X MFG or 2X FG rather increases to 80 to 100, which makes a large difference in fluidity. I personally see value in tripling slash quadrupling FPS, irrespective of the popular fake fames sentiment. Penny for your thoughts. Um, and a follow-up question from T Money fifty eight. John, when using multi frame gen three X or four X to amplify in frames well north of two hundred FPS, is motion blur still needed? Um, what do you think, John? Do you think MFG or frame generation in general has an unfairly poor reputation? I mean, I use it. Uh, I do think it, it depends, though. Doesn't it? It, it does depend. There, there's. There's a lot of different use cases here, but the first thing I, I'm trying, I'm still confused by after re-entering the PC sphere after 15 exclusive years on console. Oh, he's talking about himself. I thought he was saying, um, yes, like wait, frame gen on console, <laughs> like what? Because I'm so focused on that. That's funny. <laughs> so yeah, I do feel like it has gained a negative reputation, and I think this comes down again to what people are looking for uh, in their screen-based experience. For me, having more frames is always welcome, and using high refresh rate monitors, uh, the difference is vast. Like, if you look closely, you're going to spot some artifacts with frame generation uh, on certain types of things, but I find that far, far, far less distracting uh, than, you know, a lower overall frame rate, because it's not just about uh, response. It To me, it's about the fluidity of motion, and when you're at these really high frame rates, it just feels better it looks better to the eye uh in a way that i find extremely engaging and you're able to essentially like i'm playing through uh doom the dark ages again here on my pc and you know i'm doing five 5120 by 2160 output dlss quality with multi-frame gen uh all settings maxed out including path tracing and i'm just cruising along at 165 frames per second on this thing uh Yes, fake frames are in there, but it looks in incredibly smooth and you get the full effect of the visuals. Artifacts, I feel, are relatively minimal and it still feels very responsive to me. Now, so those are the two caveats though, right? If you're very sensitive to those, any sort of frame gen artifacts, or you're very sensitive, very sensitive to input latency, I'm not that sensitive. I am to a degree, but it depends on the game as well. Uh, this is gonna this is gonna vary from person to person. It also depends on kind of where you how you use your screen. Like after the whole switch to screen discussion, it really became clear to me that different people focus on screens in a different way. Like what they're right. looking at, the way they perceive things. A lot of this depends on how your brain perceives that screen as to whether you think it's worth it or not. So but when configured right, I love it. I always use it when I can to get those extra frames. And I think it's just, uh, it's an awesome thing that really allows you to sort of punch above where you might be without it, right? Uh, as for motion blur over 200 frames per second, I would say largely no, but it does depend a little on the game. Some games use it in interesting ways that I still find valuable. Uh, but for the most part, not really, and I don't want camera motion blur over 200 FPS for sure, because when right. you're doing all that sort of like lateral movement, the benefit, the reason I like these super high frame rates is uh, clarity. Uh, because, like, say when I use obviously OLED panels, big surprise, as everyone knows, um, but they're still sample and hold displays. So without something like black frame insertion or using like the CRT beam simulator, you're still limited by persistence blur. But once you start to hit these high refresh rates, so I've been doing a lot with that 333 hertz mode on this monitor lately. And like it's it's to the point where I feel like it exceeds most black frame insertion strobing implementations that I've seen. And you just get like really, really, really crystal clear motion that feels ultra smooth. And it's incredible feeling. I love it. 
and that's so motion blur actually gets in the way of that at those frame rates. Uh, I just played through Sigil 2, the Doom mod from Romero, uh, at 330 hertz on there, and it's it just it's it's something I can't get enough of. Um, so yeah, but that's that was native frames, right? Frame generation, multi-frame generation achieves that same level of fluidity. The caveats being just some slight artifacts, I would say, if you look very closely, usually around UI stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. Where do you sit on this, Oliver? Um, I mean, I think MFG is great, but I, I, I think MFG is really for ultra high refresh rates. And right now at the moment, I have a 144 hertz monitor and a 144 hertz television. And I personally kind of feel that's appropriate for 2x F FG, not MFG. Oh, yeah. Uh, occasionally. But on those displays, I really don't ever feel the need for MFG necessarily. I think it would be different if I had one of those great 4, 4K 240 hertz monitors or indeed something even higher refresh rate like a 360 hertz or 480 hertz monitor or something like that. Um, but I, I, I kind of think in those cases, you can kind of MFG up to your refresh rate and just kind of let it sit there. But on my kind of display, I feel like I generally am operating without FG at all. When I am operating with FG in extreme like path racing scenarios, I'm only using 2F FG. So 2, 2X FG rather. So mm -hmm. yeah, I think, I think MFG does make a large uh, impact. Certainly I saw that at CES with Alex, some of those titles with MFG on a nice 240 Hertz OLED look incredible, but uh, I don't think that applies necessarily to every single kind of display out there at every single refresh rate. I think you do want to be a bit judicious. I can say that it's interesting you mentioned the slightly lower but still reasonably high refresh rate is I did find going from 120 hertz max up to 165 max in the 5k mode on this newer monitor did allow multi-frame gen to become usable, whereas on the, oh. at 120 hertz target, it was basically unusable to me. Like the artifacts were too severe and, it, and the latency increased because the base frame rate lowered enough where uh, 3x frame gen to 165 is actually very, very usable and minimal artifacts. But one thing I didn't mention is the sort of the non-smart frame generation, like what loss of scaling is doing. Uh, this is also something I've been playing around with a lot lately, uh, specifically with 2D pixel art games and other 3D games that don't... It's like the smooth motion thing from NVIDIA, but I feel like Loss of Scaling does an even better job these days with its current 3.1 iteration. For something like, for instance, playing through Sonic Mania again, uh, I, I I stumbled over the ultra-wide mod for that game so I could fill the whole screen and get the ex ex increased field of view, but it's a game capped at 60 frames per second, right? adding in loss of scaling frame generation does increase that fluidity to 120 frames per second or 240 if you're you know doing basically multiples of 60 you get the full benefits and it genuinely looks like it's running at a higher frame rate not just like a frame interpolated one now certain types of pixel patterns can cause some artifacts but i felt like it's largely worth it and mostly artifact free for that massive boost in clarity and fluidity that you get with the higher frame rate. So it is worth experimenting with that too in certain scenarios. Um, so from my perspective, uh, first of all, to, to sort of uh, come back on a couple of points you made um, about sort of 3FG, uh, 3X MFG. Um, First of all, I think you're quite right. You've got to adjust the uh, MFG level to suit the refresh rate of the panel, which in turn will inquire, require different factors depending on how uh, challenging the game is to render in the first place. Secondly, if you have a less capable GPU, then you may need to use higher uh, factors at, but at the expense of uh, latency and obviously your base frame rate will be lower. The lower end GPUs, you require a really good sort of tuning experience to actually get a good experience, I think, with MFG, because your base latency has got to be pretty decent. Right. But, you know, 5060 Ti, you know, you can play Cyberpunk in, you know, up to like, I think I've done like 200 frames per second, and it's all about optimized settings to get there. Um, and obviously, perhaps you wouldn't need 4X MFG, perhaps you need 3X to go to like 144, 165. Um, to answer the question more specifically about an unfairly poor reputation, um, it's a tool, it's an option. I think when it stops being an option and when it becomes a requirement, then maybe there is a lot of more pushback that's um, 
uh, that's warranted, depending on the quality of the implementation. The thing, you know, for example, Mind's Eye um, booted with uh, frame generation actually active already as a default. Monster Hunter Wilds <laughs> it kind of pops up saying, you really want to turn on multi-frame <laughs> generation. You really want to turn on frame generation. It's like, do I? Uh, and then you sort of say no, and it says, really? And, you know, you, you don't really want that. It's a, it's a, it's an option. It's not. It shouldn't be a mandatory tool. However, the technology is going to progress. It is going to get better. We will reach a point where it is essentially going to max out the refresh rate of your monitor. It will just do it by default. Latency will probably improve. And at that point, you know, maybe it is worth, um, you know, maybe the sort of mandatory side of things, side of things, um, or rather sort of recommended it probably has more merit i think the reason it has an unfairly poor reputation is um and it does go back to those bar charts i'm afraid having frame gen and multi-frame gen in bar charts and kind of suggesting that it's uh the same quality of experience as non-frame gen um is an issue but i think it's also an issue with the concept of bar charts in general i mean there's a lot going on that uh uh, you know that, that is missing nuance that's missing when you're just looking at bar charts i think that's one of the reasons why it's got um a poor reputation versus the actual experience which you know a lot of people are very very happy with and the feature does seem to have a lot of pickup and the other thing which i think you should bear in mind is the fact that if frame generation was such a bad idea why is it that everybody is pursuing their own frame generation technologies AMD followed NVIDIA, Intel followed NVIDIA, Apple are now producing their own frame generation technology. Mm -hmm. You can, oh, and of course, um, FSR Redstone, uh, AI generated frames going into a part of that, which in turn means it's going to be in PlayStation, which in turn means it's going to be in, <laughs> in, in Xbox consoles. You know, it's just it's just part of the direction of travel moving forward, just as upscaling is now. Obviously, you can have good upscaling and bad upscaling experiences, just as you can have good and bad uh, frame generation experiences. I think the issue is with frame generation is that you've got to have good performance to begin with in order to have a good experience. If you, you know, frame generation is not going to turn a bad experience into a good one. I think that's the other differentiating factor. And uh, that's something else that the bar charts don't really show. You know, you can have low base frame rates in your bar chart and suddenly that bar extends dramatically, but it's not going to be great. And um, yeah, that's what I think about that. It's, uh, it's, it's a tricky one for sure.